So welcome to another MTD Daily. Today uh, I'm joined by two gentlemen, uh, the first of which is Alan Mucklow, who's the uh, Managing Director of uh, Sales and Service in the UK and Ireland uh, from Mazak. Now we're going to be talking to Alan about uh, the current climate, uh, the business and how Mazak are coping in the current times. After that we'll be joined by Mark Hall where we'll be looking and talking about some uh, technical features on some of the products that are made here in the UK. So firstly Alan, welcome uh, to today's MTD show. How are you coping there in Worcester uh, in the current climate Alan? First of all good morning Paul, hope, you, hope you're well and all the MTD are well. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's certainly an interesting time uh, here. There's the sun is shining in Worcester and, um, and we're still open for business here in, in the uh, Worcester facility um, and still manufacturing machine tools um, and supporting them. And, and how about the manufacturing side? I mean, we're all well, uh, you know, we're all well versed in what you actually make there in, in Worcester. And, and in fact, when you look at machine tool manufacturing in the UK, you're one of the only ones you know, in some senses, left standing. Uh, are you still able to produce product and support spares and so forth? Yeah, from a manufacturing point of view, a huge amount of work's gone in. Um, I, I must say, with, with the, uh, the very great support of the, of the staff here in ensuring that we can maintain a production level, clearly it's not the same level that we've enjoyed uh, prior to this lockdown, but um, a huge amount of work's gone into making sure the factory can ensure social distancing. We have one-way systems, extra facilities, um, and staggering the shift pattern that we're working here to maintain a production level. So clearly there are critical businesses that require our products, not just here in the UK, but across Europe. So uh, it's important that we keep that flow of machines coming out of, of the facility here. Um, but clearly that's got to be within the guidelines uh, to maintain the safety of our employees, which is paramount for us. And, and you are still, I mean, how is output at the moment? Are, are machines still being shipped? Yeah, we're still shipping machines um, with, with our partners, not just to the UK, but also uh, to, to our European um, uh, partners and YMXs and, and customers. So there's activity still going on, but clearly say that the, the, the prime message for us internally here and our external customers uh, is to ensure that that's done safely. So all of the distancing procedures, ensuring that all of our uh, staff um, use the correct protective gear when on site, uh, is being, being uh, insured so that uh, we're delivering products safely. Uh, and outside of this uh, current situation, have, having your manufacturing plant there in the UK, what sort of advantages does that give you uh, in this market, in the domestic market? Uh, well, we're proud, obviously, to be a UK manufacturer with some 32 years now here, and uh, clearly having a production facility based in the UK just does give us some advantages in terms of reacting to the market requirements, which are clearly quite... Um, diverse at the moment from, from different industry sectors which are experiencing different challenges and um, it's not just about supporting in terms of build, it's supporting in terms of service. We're trying to maintain a strong service capability. It's not the same level we would normally have clearly as is the case with most um, uh, companies of our, our product um, style um, but also application support as well. There's still many companies actively using products that need support in how to optimise their production uh, capacity to meet the challenges that they're facing in these difficult times. Brilliant, thank you, Alan. Okay, we'll catch up with you again shortly. Uh, but in the interim, we're gonna to talk to Mark Hall uh, about some of those products that are manufactured uh, here in the UK. So, uh, Mark, welcome to uh, the show today. Uh, I hope you're keeping well. Um, I'd like to uh, firstly pick up on one of the, the product ranges that's made there in Worcester, uh, which is the, uh, the QT series. Now, could you maybe give our viewers uh, a brief overview of that product and what the advantages are to engineers to invest in that, but the fact that it's also made here, uh, you know, within these shores? Hello, Paul. Um, nice to join you. The Quick Turn product is um, a really key product for us and also been very successful with our customers as well. Uh, they've enjoyed the benefits of that um, and uh, I'd like to go through a couple of those right now really. So we manufacture uh, the Quick Turn 200 series, the 250 series, the 300 and the 350 series here which takes us from an 8 inch chuck right up to a 12 and can be optionally fitted with a 15 inch, inch chuck. We do a, a range of those machines covering from mill spindle to Y axis and second spindle so you're able to manufacture quite complex pieces in a done-in-one operation. Now, is it that, that, that's the key to me with this technology. Um, do you still find a lot of engineers, Mark, are, 
are, are learning about the, the capabilities of, of being able to one hit machine. You know, do you still go into a lot of machine shops and think actually, you know, a, a multi, uh, sorry, a, a twin spindle machine with mill drill and Y axis would reduce the cycle time of that part by, you know, 50% and get rid of all the manual handling, but they still don't, well, they still haven't even begun that journey. We do see that, Paul, and there are a number of other benefits as well. For example, reducing floor space by reducing the number of machines, um, one operator being able to focus on a range of components, and also uh, reducing the time that takes the throughput components uh, through the manufacturing process. This is really some of the major benefits as well. And do you find if that was the case, for example, the fact that you are making the machines here, um, you've got a very strong applications team, uh, the, the, the training of those uh, individuals is very, very important and you being able to actually guide them how to get the best out of the technology. Yes, that's, that's essential really. Um, we have a good range of products, but the knowledge behind those products and the ability to support them uh, is, is, um, is, can't be underestimated really. And uh, there's a lot been done in terms of the, uh, the, the control system and how easy that is to program right through to our ability to deliver comprehensive training. I'd actually like to touch on the control system. Because, you know, Paul, we use our own Mazatrol, which is a conversational programming system. And that has some major benefits as well. Not only can you program very quickly by the side of the machine, but it's the ability, really, to take a component from the initial test cut stage and programming through to manufacturing chips and then optimizing the program in the shortest possible time. And that's what we're able to do with Mazatrol. You can set the program up very simply with conversational language. The machine then includes uh, an automatic tool setter that we can measure tools to set up quickly. We can then use that tool setter to, um, to, to manage tools in cuts, so through automatic compensation during the, the cycle. But also as well, when, when the machine is first set up, we've got some very clever features that you can optimize the programs through uh, VFC function, that allows if the program is not quite right, you can override the, the spindle speed and the, the feed rate, and then automatically update the program on the fly. These are things that enable really um, people who want to turn around parts quickly to get the machine up and running and to get into full production as quickly as possible. And, and do you think that there's bigger gains then to be made on the software side than the hardware these days? Because there are a lot of you know, uh, multi-axis twin spindle, you know, single turret machines out there uh, that, are, that are capable um, and that you compete with. But do you think some of these bigger gains, gains are coming as a result of your software uh, that you integrate into the hardware? Yes, that's certainly true. And there's a number of reasons. Um, on our smooth control, we offer a 3D sister function as standard. So customers can import a 3D model directly into the, in, in, into the program and they can digitize features from that model. So that really produces an error-free way of creating a program, and it reduces the time necessary for program. That's, that's a, a, a real key feature. And then the ability uh, from that program to simulate it directly on the machine, again, as a standard function. What this does is uh, and gives the customer and the end user that confidence that the program is going to machine uh, without any interference and accidents on the machine. Now, just before we move on to the VTC series, Mark, this range of quick turn machines, how long has it been established um, and how many would you have approximately out in the field to give, uh, to give potential purchasers confidence of, of the machine? Well, Paul, we've been manufacturing the quick turn for over 30 years and we've done several generations of that control. It is our, our most pop, pop, popular machine and um, we, we touch really a wide customer base, everything from subcontractors to medical right through to aerospace uh, and to automotive are covered by that, that machine. So it's a hugely versatile offering, certainly with all the models that you've, you mentioned earlier within the range that you make there in Worcester. Uh, let's move on to the VTC 800. Now this, uh, I have to say, this is a real head turner, uh, this machine, and in fact this range. Uh, talk to us about these travelling column machines, Mark. Well, the VTC is something that we've manufactured a while in, in Worcester. And the VTC 800 series is uh, one of our flagship models. It's been designed and manufactured here within the European Manufacturing uh, Centre. It offers really some real unique features for the customer. So take our VTC 800 uh, with a, a three metre length in, in X-axis. It has a three and a half metre length uh, table. 
But interestingly, the actual overall dimension of the machine is just 4.25 meters. So you get an incredibly large working space within a small footprint of the machine. And the reason for that, Paul, is because it's a traveling column, the table is fixed, and, and therefore we don't have the, the, the necessary um, extra space on the left and the right for, for a moving table. Yeah, I think that's one of the big advantages I see as well. And the, and the fact that that table's fixed means you can, you know, you can put very heavy parts and components on there because you're not having to worry about them being moved on the x-axis as well, aren't you? Um, is the, uh, the pendulum machining a, a, an aspect here as well? Yes, that, that's a really important function. Um, the machine is very versatile. So you can manufacture some large work pieces. You can make work pieces that are larger than table. But when you want to go into some form of serial production, you can fit the center partition. And then when one side is being loaded, the other side can be machining and we can switch over. And that's the, the, the pendulum effect. Yeah, I think the fact then, really what you're enabling the machine to do then is keep running, aren't you? You're able to optimize and get the most out of your, um, out of your spindle. Um, these machines come with various configurations. You can obviously have the, the five axis solution here with the, with, with the head. Um, a, a very, very versatile offering mark, and all made there in Worcester. Yes, that's right. It's, um, it's a high specification machine. It's an 18,000 RPM machine with 210, uh, 220 degrees rotation on the B-axis. It's fitted with a roller gear cam, so it's a very powerful, rigid uh, system. And it also delivers 18,000 RPM and 35 kilowatts. So again, agile performance, but very powerful. Uh, and a big, big y-axis. I mean, that's you know often overlooked, isn't it? Some engineers love that big y-axis. Gives you again more flexibility. Well, that's that's a key factor. You know, if, if you're looking to invest in a machine and you've got a number of components coming coming your way and you're wondering what sort of size capacity, then the VTC 800 is perfect. Really, uh, you can manufacture components on there. You can do large mould work as well. Uh, you can also um, fit different. Uh, auxiliary tables, so for example, five axis table or a number of diff different solutions is configurable for all sorts of applications. And, and for this machine as well, coming on to b b before we, we, uh, we talk to Alan again, Mark, the, for me, the application support that you offer, th this is an education because you can go in some machine shops, they can have several VMCs next to each other and you know that they're, they're quite tight for space uh, and some of those machines will be sat idle because the, the operator can't get from one to the other you know this sort of eliminates all of that doesn't it in, in, in a smaller footprint enables you to I suppose everybody's looking for, for production per meter square and this is a machine that can help so you need to teach people that and Mazak are good at that yes that's right. We, we do a full comprehensive lineup. I mean, we offer C frame machines as well. They're very su successful. But the VTC 800 has some very um, unique characteristics with a fixed table. And that really does enable you to make a really large workpiece but have a limited floor space. And that's essential for today's customers. Brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us, Mark. That's uh, Mark Hall. He's the uh, European Group Product Manager uh, for Mazak. Now, we're going to talk to Alan again before we conclude uh, this show. Um, Alan, one last question for yourself. Uh, we do ask a lot of our um, guests on this show is that when we do come out of uh, the current situation, which we will, and hopefully it's not too far away now, uh, what sort of path do you think UK manufacturing will take? And will it change at all? Because, I'm, I mean, I'd caveat that question with the fact that, you know, a lot of people are talking about automation and digital technologies, but a lot of these things, they were already happening, weren't they? Yeah, yes, they were. But I, I guess um, to talk about the future, we have to look back at what was happening prior to, to, um, to this situation uh, uh, coming to the forefront, which it has in the last obviously five to six weeks. Um, and UK manufacturing, having gone through the Brexit um, discussion and, and issues, was extremely buoyant. I mean, we, we were seeing a, a real... Um, strengthening of the marketplace as we came into the year um, and as we went through the early months of the year. Um, and I think that really reflects the strength and the resilience, as I said, of the UK manufacturing um, society uh, and the innovation that we have in this country, uh, especially in industries like aerospace, the automotive sector, oil and gas, medical. Um, now, clearly, those industries have been affected in different ways during the last few weeks. Um, some of them uh, positively in terms of demand, uh, others more negatively. But I think what will happen in my view is that once we've got through this situation, we will see a continuation of that resurgence. 
but it will enable people to, in this period, to reflect on how they want their businesses to be configured in the future. Automation is clearly one uh, of those aspects which will benefit um, the discussion on Industry 4 uh, and how that will continue in, 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 in its guise. And obviously what we're doing with the iSmart capability to understand your assets, not just in the factory, but remotely. Um, so it, it certainly will change, but I think ultimately the resilience of, of the, the UK um, uh, community within manufacturing, the strengths we have in manufacturing will see us have a very successful future. And I, I think talking to my European colleagues, obviously they're a few weeks ahead of us in terms of this situation, uh, and they're certainly seeing signs of, of an improvement, which clearly we would like to see coming through here, and I think we will uh, in, the, in the coming months. Um, that's one of the reasons that it's very important for our sales teams um, to be talking to our customers, and not, not just in terms of investment, but also understanding what their challenges are and the way they're thinking. So that's one of the clear strategies we put in place is having our sales teams ready, talking on a regular basis to our, our customers, understanding their needs, understanding their challenges, um, to enable us to really come through this together um, when we do exit the, the coronavirus situation, hopefully in a not too distant future. But I, I do think there'll be a strong future of UK manufacturing. Good stuff, Alan. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, thank, thank you, Mark. Um, looking forward to uh, joining you two gentlemen again in Worcester in the near future. I'm sure you'll have some events planned uh, before Mac 2021. So there you have it, a, uh, a UK machine tool manufacturer and their experience at the moment uh, with what's going on in the marketplace. But not just that, we touched on some of the products that they're actually uh, building there in Worcester and some of the most popular machines uh, that are installed, not just here in the UK, but around the world.